video is uh, another in a, a series of tutorials about how to incorporate uh, Python scripting within ArcGIS. Um, we'll eventually get to some videos that actually show how you can use scripting in Arc using the ArcPy module. Uh, but until we get to that point, I wanted to just run through a bunch of videos that review some basic concepts in, in syntax and, and how you can use the language to improve your versatility. Uh, same disclaimer I give at the beginning of each of these Python videos. I am not a programmer or a coder. Uh, I learned Python within the context of ArcGIS and then uh, expanded my, my verbiage a little bit outside of that. Uh, but the manner in which I'm teaching these videos is really meant for those who are beginners or just want to be conversational with Python and in particular are really trying to eventually use it within uh, ArcGIS. Um, so they will not dive into some of the you know, much more nuanced uh, or conceptual theoretical concepts around language structure. Um, so in the last couple of videos, uh, we dove into conditional statements and uh, uh, loops, which are some really powerful elements of Python. Uh, you know, for one video, we introduced the if, the for, and the while. And then in the follow-up, we wandered or walked through some concepts around continuing, breaking, and passing within for and while loops. Um, this is kind of the third in the, the series, and really what this one is meant to do is just actually kind of demonstrate a for and an if, uh, you know, in action, so we can kind of see how they work. Uh, so there's a script here I wrote that's just called script to report the qualities of a user input word. All right, so if I open it, uh, you know, in my command line, it's going to ask me to enter a word. Uh, you know, and maybe I will uh, enter the word zebra just to start. And what this word comes back, it tells me that this word is five characters long. It tells me that my word has two vowels, and it tells me that my word is worth 16 points in Scrabble. Right. So I mean, the script is, uh, you know, not omniscient. We have to try to figure out what did we do in the programming language that was able to deconstruct that word, and talk about these three very discrete things, right? How long it was, how many vowels it had, and how many points it was worth in Scrabble. All right, so the script that I actually kind of have here, you can see we uh, started by defining a word, um, or sorry, a function called word qualities. Uh, asked them to input a word, you know, and then uppercased it. And of course, the reason we did that is in case they entered something lowercase and we needed to test it, uh, we can only test upper against upper and not worry about lower and upper being different. And uh, really what we have is just a series of interesting kind of little sublists, right? They didn't necessarily need to be lists. This would have succeeded just as much by making them strings, you know, but sometimes when I demonstrate videos, I want to call back to some old methods and old functions just in case. So just a series of lists that store within them, you know, all of our vowels, you know, all of the words that are worth one point in Scrabble, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, and then we have here little counters, right, that are eventually going to report the score in Scrabble or how many vowels, but they start at zero because the script doesn't yet know the word. So notice we have uh, two little fours that start, um, you know, that are going to run through two different things. And the first one, it simply wants to find the letter in the user word, right? So it's going to, uh, you know, essentially find each of the letters within the user word. So in zebra, it's going to go through Z and then E and then B and then R and then A. And it, right under that, runs through an if statement. Right, so for the first one, it says, "Hey, if that letter Z, for example, happens to be in vowels, then the number of vowels, which we know here, is zero, will increase by one. If it is not, as we referenced in a future video, it'll just continue. Right, it'll start at the uh, the next part of the loop. Right, and so that's what happens. Z, no. E, yes. So that became one. B, no. Uh, R, no. And then A, yes." Right, so at the end of this loop, num vowels was then up to two, and that's how it was able to report it as it's such here. Same basic concept here for how we did it for the um, the, the 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 how much a point wor is worth in Scrabble, except there's just more areas to test, right? So it simply tested, hey, are you in the one point? No. Are you in the two point? No. Are you in the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Right? It's got to be in one of those unless it's just a space. You know, or a number, in which case it would just continue and not give any points. And then the minute it simply finds out, it adds those points. So it starts with Z, and Z has to go through each one until it finally gets to this elif. Yes, Z is in the 10-point list, so, you know, Scrabble score goes up to 10. All right, is E in the 1-point list? Yes, E is in the 1-point list, so it goes up to 11. All right, where's B? B is in the 3-point uh, uh, the list, so it goes up to 14. And then both R and A are in the 1, so it goes 15 and then 16. 
Right, so that's the basic kind of concept here, and that's how you can easily nest, you know, if statements within for statements. Uh, and some of the later scripts maybe we're going to have on this site to just review more complex things, you'll see you can nest for statements within for statements within for statements. But always, right, the biggest things to understand about structure and syntax here is that once a for statement initiates, you will not get to any of the rows that share its indentation until the for has either been broken, which is not going to happen here because we're saying continue, or it gets through the word, right? So it has to go through each letter in zebra, and only when it gets to the A does it then go and redo it again down here. And only once it gets through all of those does it then even print anything about this word down here, right? So again, think about these as equal, but they're only equal once the for loop has finished, right? That's the whole purpose uh, of the indentation structure.